Hi, my name is Chris Spangle, and I am the host of We Are Libertarians. It is a podcast that examines current events from a libertarian perspective, but we're very fair and independent. So if you want to understand the news, then please check it out at wearelibertarians.com. Now, we did an episode on the Gillette commercial and uh, about masculinity, talked for it in an extended discussion. I've posted about it on a few, uh, on a few posts on Facebook, Twitter, wherever. And uh, I wanted to just dive into it in a different way and actually break down the commercial itself because one of the annoying things about <laughs> these sorts of topics in society are that everybody looks at it through their own bias and they post from their own bias, but it never seems like they actually sit down and watch something like this and break it down. And so I wanted to break it down and actually look at what they were trying to get across. What were the values that Gillette was trying to present? Now, obviously this is viral marketing. This is a company that sells a product and they want people like me to talk about it to people like you. Uh, so it helps them sell product. They are some have said virtue signaling, trying to get more people to buy product by showing that they are woke, quote unquote. Uh, I found this commercial to actually be very, um, I didn't hate it. <laughs> I, I, there are parts of it that I have serious troubles with that we'll, we'll show you as I break this down. But in totality, it really is a message of personal responsibility. And I don't know why so many people are jumping on this particular commercial when so many of the values are probably things that they themselves, the, the people who would disparage this particular uh, commercial, they would, they would espouse some of these virtues, like fatherhood, like um, you know, respect, justice. And so let's, let's jump into it. So you have to look at it through the lens that this is a commercial and this is a corporation. Now, corporations, according to the Supreme Court and according to most people, corporations can, uh, are free to speak in whatever way they'd like. And they have the ability to donate to political campaigns. So if you're a person who does not think that uh, Gillette has the right to put out an advertisement, or as they call it, a short film about a particular piece of societal commentary that they care about, then you probably should be consistent and say that corporations should not donate to your favorite campaign. So I think that's one area where people are kind of inconsistent. A lot of conservatives, especially, where they're, they're happy that Citizens United passed and that corporations can have the ability to speak politically. But they want them to speak politically in the way that they want them to speak politically. And this is not uncommon. People on the left and the right and in the middle and everybody does it. You're for the free speech of a corporation as long as they agree with you. And so I think that that is an argument that doesn't really move me. It, it doesn't really seem like something that is uh, an argument against this. It's a convenient out for people because I think when people are saying, well, this is a bad format to do it. Well, what is, it, what is that format? Funding a piece that, uh, that speaks in a way that is not necessarily, it's not inflammatory in any way. I don't get that argument with this particular piece of content. Things like Nike and Colin Kaepernick, I get, I get that because Nike is intentionally shoving their thumb in the eye of a certain per, por, portion of their audience. And I think that may be why there is such a backlash on this is that companies are trying to appeal to the left and to the social justice crowd and people who are on the right are tired of hearing it they're tired of being scolded by corporations and so when you take advantage of that avenue too often the audiences are just exhausted they're worn out and so your message doesn't really penetrate but i think the reason that the gillette commercial is different than something like nike is that there's something that i think a lot of people probably everybody can agree on a lot of the principles that are actually in this piece of uh, th this commercial now i have worked at an advertising agency i've worked in ad supported media most of my life i've been on every portion of the media spectrum and so I look at this maybe in a different way than you might. And I look at it from a content creation standpoint. What were they trying to do? What was the, tri the message they were trying to get across? And so having that background, I wanted to break it down and give you my point of view. So let's jump into it. I think the overall message of this advertisement is that men have a choice. You can choose to be a gentleman governed by values, or you can be a man governed by your base nature. Now, 
I know that a lot of this seems like, oh, this is so deep for a commercial, but that's what they're really trying to go for. They're trying to get people to think outside of the box. And again, I'm going into the subtle messaging. I'm trying to tell you what the author or the writer of this particular piece was trying to express to you. Uh, maybe you may not see it, but I think this was the intent behind it. So that's the overarching theme. Uh, now, they open up with probably the most controversial part of this, and what they're trying to do with these three little phrases is they're trying to set the context of what you're about to see. So it, it, in essence, they're trying to get you caught up and get you in a headspace so that you understand the context quickly of what they're trying to do in what follows. And they do that by fake news reports. Not fake news reports like CNN and Jim Acosta, but like actual fake pre-recorded things about Me Too. So you'll you'll see that in this particular part. Bullying. The Me Too the movement against sexual harassment. masculinity. Now, the most controversial part of that is the toxic masculinity. And I've had several conversations with female friends who don't quite understand why that is just really pissing men off. And I think you have to think about it in, in terms of, not in logical ways. So I think when people hear toxic masculinity, especially maybe if you're a female, you think of it in terms of feminism, and this is a set of behaviors, and you think about it very logically. But the way that men experience that word is really the same way, and, and, and not across the board, but generally, as the way that women experience the B word or the C word. It's set at a time where the, the messenger is trying to get across an emotional wound, and it's usually in a public forum, so there's a piece of public shaming to it. And it is a, a, a hurtful, diminishing label that's derogatory. Now, that may not be the way that the word was invented. It wasn't invented for those reasons. There are many good things about um, the word toxic masculinity in the fact that it is trying to capture a small segment of a group of males who act in a way that is is not helpful to society, right? That's the logical way of thinking about it. But that's not how men experience it. Men experience it in a way that is aggressive from a woman. It is diminishing and it's derogatory. It's a pejorative. And so men, I think a lot of times when they hear toxic masculinity, they don't hear it in the same way that like they hear me too, which is that's a movement. Toxic masculinity is something that has been hurled as an epithet towards men. And so they react to it very strongly. And so that's, I think, why this is, it's called the toxic masculinity commercial. That's not really what this is about. It's actually about the proper role of masculinity in society um, for the most part and not about toxic masculinity. Because if it were about toxic masculinity, they just put R. Kelly <laughs> in the actual video. So it's interesting that people have grabbed onto that particular word when that's not the intention of the actual piece. The intention of the piece the intention of the use of the words is to get you to grab onto the context really quickly. So let's go on. Is this the best a man can get? Now they show their original ad, and if you go back and watch that 88 ad that, that they air there, it really, they, Gillette is a company that has been thinking about man's role in society and advertising that way for a long time. So it's this is not out of their... It's not like they just came up with this. This seems to be part of their marketing DNA. Is it? So that particular visual image is meant to portray that it's wrong to physically attack another person. Mob justice is not okay. A uh, powerful man has the, now eventually the, power, the man comes in and rescues the boy. But the underlying value here is justice, that mob mobs aren't supposed to chase people and uh, a, a powerful man can eventually help a powerful boy if he so chooses is it we can't hide from it and that part is about bullying and that it, verbal abuse abuse towards a peer has a serious emotional impact on other people and you should think about your particular words harassment is actually wrong and so the value that they're trying to push there is empathy. Think about what you say before you say it because your words have an effect on other people. It's been going on far too long. Now, that the first two parts were that it's wrong to degrade women, even if you're joking. Uh, I don't totally agree with that. I think that, it, A, it is wrong to degrade women, but also it depends on the context of the joke, right? And so an overarching view of any joke about 
men and women in traditional roles is wrong. It, it depends on who is listening to the joke, telling the joke, what the context is, the the depth of intimacy between the two people having that particular conversation. So I think that's really individualistic. And so uh, it's they're they're trying to get across something, but I don't think that that necessarily is terribly applicable. But the the value that they're trying to push there is respect. It is interesting that they use like a Jersey Shore piece in there. You know that they're trying to portray sexual uh, nihil, like uh, a humanistic worldview, as something that is wrong, right? So, which is sort of counter to what you hear when people talk about this ad. That it's oh, it's just liberalism, it's cultural Marxism trying to get you to think a certain way. So, and then they show three boys on the couch actually watching that particular scene. We can't laugh it off. Who's the daddy? <laughs> what I actually think she's trying to say making the same now this is something that early on uh when early on a few years ago i really started to i mean i was just like a guy like anybody else if you watch married with children you know i have al bundy right here uh i love that show and uh, they're basically (laughs) calling it out in this particular commercial um but you know the thing about married with children is it has marcy and marcy is like this great feminist and and it is. It's it's the feminist versus the oaf, and it's sort of like Blazing Saddles, where Richard Pryor wrote most of the movie. And the point is, look at this smart black man who can be smart, outsmarting the dumb racists. Um, so it's kind of counter programming. Um, so it it is actually something that happens to women in the workplace, and there there are actual parts of what women are trying to say to men that are realistic that women in the workplace find that their ideas are not validated until a man actually echoes those sentiments. And then the other men in the room go, okay, especially amongst an older set. Um, I'm not going to call out baby boomers because I want a lot of people to to, uh, not feel attacked here. Um, But women do feel talked over. And, And I think if you disagree, if you're going, that's not true, ask the women in your life about their professional lives. And I think that you will find a surprising answer. And so that is directly from a regular boardroom. And what what they're really trying to say, it's not just about men and women and that dynamic, that it's wrong to condescend to people, that it is um, upon the powerful person within a room to, to listen to the less powerful room in, as an equal and to not condescend to them. And the value is equality. So, you know, so we're talking about justice and empathy and respect and equality. I don't necessarily think that those things are anything that the viewers, you at home, would disagree with, nothing that I disagree with. So far, not horribly controversial yet. So we'll, let's continue. Excuses. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. But something finally changed. Allegations regarding sexual assault and sexual harassment. This is where I start to go into, okay, what are you trying to get into? Um, Now, as a libertarian, I don't believe in violence or physical force or implied force to get you to do anything that I believe in. It's It's not appropriate for me to use violence or force to get you to live a way that I want you to live. So to, to achieve any social or, f- or uh, s- political goals, uh, sorry, Mittens is jumping in here. I'm trying to get rid of her. Now, nonviolence, it, it, there's two ways to look at how what they're trying to express here. There is, let's go with the hopeful view of what they're trying to express, which is that nonviolence is the value that they're trying to represent here. Um, I personally think that what they're trying to do is say that aggressiveness is not an appropriate value. And I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that violence is not a value that I personally believe that anyone should hold. But aggressiveness in terms of assertiveness, in terms of being aggressive in achieving your goals, aggressive in reforming yourself... Uh, If you look up the actual textbook definition of aggressive, which I should have written down here, uh, but I didn't, then you'll kind of go, okay, it's not necessarily in that way. And you see the American uh, Psychiatric Association saying that aggressiveness is one of the traits that psychologists should try to breed out of men. I don't agree with that. I think that uh, aggressiveness helps further the species. 
aggressiveness and domination in terms of trying in the way that we think of with like R. Kelly, where he is uh, aggressive towards women. He's sexually aggressive. He is um, trying to dominate women in in a controlling way. Those are that's not that's not the the version of aggressiveness that I'm speaking of. That's obviously completely wrong and something that we as a society need to say this is wrong. Um, so I do think that this is where a lot of the critics of this particular uh, commercial are right, where there is a liberal value of decreasing classic masculine traits um, and saying that this this part of masculinity is not okay. And I think we just have different working definitions of it. You know, I consider myself more towards the right. I'm more of an independent. I'm not. I'm not a, a Republican. I'm a libertarian. And when it comes to these issues, I'm. Very, I try to be very fair because I've been on. I've been on uh, the side of false accusations, and I've been on the side of uh, helping friends through domestic violence. And I think there's just right and wrong, right? So. Uh, so I disagree with the way that they kind of push this in there, but um, w- one of the things that they're, they're, I think they're trying to get through is excusing uncivilized behavior with a cliche. It's not acceptable. Um, just because nature created us a certain way, you have to rise above your, your uh, natural tendencies. Self-restraint is the value here. So, you know, everybody has impulses, man, male or female or non-binary. Uh, everybody as a human being has, that's the, the idea of the gentleman. If you're a man, you're supposed to um, fight within yourself. In Islam, it's the greater jihad as opposed to the lesser jihad, which is probably the way that you're familiar with the word. The greater jihad is the constant battle within yourself to live a godly life. And uh, that, I think, is the, f- the more... F- um, positive interpretation of what they're going for now uh so it is telling that they go to the host of the young turks i think that it is very fair for the right to point out that there's a there's a small subtle piece of programming that you're using her particular face uh instead of maybe wolf blitzer or other people uh so um so let's continue on and continue to watch this And there will be no going back. Because we, we believe in the best in men. Men need to hold other men accountable. Smile, sweet. Now, Terry Crews has been awesome on this stuff. Terry Crews, I think, is a real leader in talking about masculinity. Because what I think we're going through is a societal shift in gender roles, in moving away from the Lucy and Ricky era uh, the Mad Men era and moving towards a more fair and equitable, equitable society. And I think that when you look at uh, gender roles from a, a, the viewpoint of equality, justice, fairness, then you start to maybe not even fairness as much because you're never going to get everything fair. But respect may be the be- the value that I was looking for there. You you start to find a lot of agreement. When you start getting into men are the oppressors and women are the oppressed, that's when you start to lose people like me and other men who are willing to listen and willing to negotiate on these norms, but not willing to be subjugated. And the the problem for both the male side and the female side of the debate around modern gender norms is that the most extreme voices are leading the conversation. And that's one of the reasons that I like Terry Crews is that he's sort of that middle ground guy. And, uh, you know, his message is, I don't think what they're trying to get by what they're signaling there is not accountability, even though he says accountability, it's courage. So if you're in a situation where, you know, ethics and morals are being bent or broken, are you willing to step in and fight for justice or whatever particular value that is being violated there? Um, you know, are you willing to step in to enforce positive values and ethics or are you just staying silent and allowing negative ones to, to flourish? And so I think courage is the dominant value there. Uh, so to recap, you know, justice, empathy, respect, uh, quality, um, nonviolence, self-restraint and courage so far. Not a lot that I think most people disagree with, which is why I think a lot of people are sitting here going, why is this even controversial? 
So let's continue. Smile, sweetie. Come on. To say the right thing. To act the right Whoa. way. Bro, not cool. Not cool. All right. So here's where I really go. Okay. This is where this is where the meninists are starting I'm starting to see their point. I think the smile sweetie example is actually misogynistic. I think this is the part of this commercial where they're encouraging misogyny. Because uh, if if we're going to have an equitable society and encourage women to be strong, then when a boy turns around and says smile sweetie and she has a problem with it, it's up to another man to correct the man. Or if a guy cat calls a woman on the street, it's up to another man to take care of her. It's really up to the woman to decide what she is comfortable with and enforce her boundaries. That's the emotionally stable, healthy part. And, and trying to encourage a hero complex in men, the white, the, the, the white knight in shining armor, that is a very destructive tendency. That's a form of codependency in men where they don't feel good about themselves, and so they try to find a weak woman to save, so then their life has value and meaning, and it's an external validation. It's not internal validation. So I actually think that that particular piece of the commercial reinforces the notion that women are weak, men need to be strong to protect the small woman. So, uh, you know, while protecting others is a good value, um, we have to encourage women to be courageous and stand up for themselves, but also to be cognizant that the, if they're in a situation, to ask for help. It's okay to ask for help, and men need to be willing to step up and help, uh, just as other women do. It's it's you see someone in trouble and they ask for help, then you should help them. So, if, if anyone, man or woman, is unable to meet a certain challenge and they ask for help, then we should be there. That's part of being in a community. So, the same with the second part. Uh, it, it should also be noted, and this has largely been pointed out. Um, on sort of like the by the Paul Joseph Watsons of the world that many of the perpetrators in this video are are white men and many of the heroes are people of color right and so there's two ways you can look at that you can look at it like oh the left is just trying to say all white men are the devil and they're the ones catcalling women and it's up to the, the the brave black and Hispanic men of the world to save society. You could look at it that way, but I, I you could also look at it as this is um, a commercial maybe geared towards people of color saying you're you have to participate in this as well, right? So I think there's there's a couple different ways to look at that. And obviously I haven't seen an interview anywhere with the people who put this thing together or what their meaning was. I'm just guessing, right? Uh, I made that clear, I think, but um, but I don't necessarily think to to jump jump to the conclusion that white man bad. Uh, I think that's um, a little a, a little too knee jerk. So uh, obviously, diversity in the creative arts is predominant, so it's easy to understand that. But it also could be geared at an audience of color and encouraging certain values in those communities so you don't you know i, I don't th know who made the ad it could be uh, who, who knows so anyways um but there could be a subtle piece of programming there where white men are bad but uh we don't know that so it's kind of hard to jump to a conclusion now we jump into to uh, smaller clips and the values that are represented here are peacemaking between the guys on the street getting into a fight fatherhood and just courage when the man stands up in front of the other NPC fathers uh, non-player character look up the meme if you're not familiar with it um, uh, he stands and runs to break up the fight some already are in ways big Yo, men. And small. I am strong. I am strong. But some is not enough. So how we treat each other, okay? Now I want to comment on the boys beating each other up. Aggressiveness and roughhousing, these are important things that, you know, it, it's just ingrained in us. And one of my favorite things was wrestling with my dad. Um it just it's it's part of being a man is that physicality 
And uh, if they're trying to say that that's bad, then I disagree with that particular thing. But I also think we need to think of it in terms of violence. Like I have a nanny friend, uh, Sarah, and she was telling me how funny it is to watch, to train three-year-old boys to walk up and say, may I hit you? Yes. (laughs) And so if we're ever going to get to a place in society where we stop looking to the state to use violence to force others to live as we want them to live, then you have to start young. Uh, That's why a lot of parents have stopped spanking. It's like, if I don't want my kid to be violent, then I can't say violence is wrong. Don't hit your sister while I'm spanking you. Now, that's what every parent has to wrestle with those questions. I'm not a parent, uh, so I don't know where I come down on it. But you could look at this particular, if we're looking at this and trying to look at it with a the benefit of the doubt, that could be one message that they're trying to get across here. Okay. Because the boys watching today will be the men of tomorrow. So I really liked that part. I, th- I think that's a really... Um, I think each of us need to be aware, not just men, but women and anyone in any setting. People are watching you and watching what choices you make, not just your children, but that when you're living around your children, the programming of them watching your choices is more powerful than hearing your words. So it, it, you have to, I think, reminders about the power of sending an example in the world is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, some of the other values that I think that you could see in this are dependability, reliability, commitment. You know, maybe not in this, but I think in terms of manhood uh, within this kind of context, dependability, reliability, commitment, open-mindedness, compassion, motivation, positivity, and service to others. Uh, you know, the man running to break up the fight with the boys, the powerful man breaking up the fight with the powerless boy. You know, that's he's doing a service to this boy. He's he's rendering justice because he has the power to do so, and he's making the choice, and he's leaving a positive impression on his son. Um, so let's watch the very end here, which I don't think a lot of people got to. It's only by challenging ourselves to do more that we can get closer to our best. We are taking action. So it ends with a reminder that uh, men must be leaders, that you have to model values to the next generation. Every man has to challenge themselves, and through individual responsibility, we can change society. So I just look at people like Ben Shapiro saying this is a very dumb, stupid commercial, and then after the commercial plays, he, t- he completely trashes it and says all of the things, you know, what we need to teach men is all of the things that I just outlined. Personal responsibility, motivation, compassion, um, you know, respect. Like, I just wonder if people actually watched this with an open mind to see what the values that they were trying to put forth. Because in my mind, a lot of these are really important values that are an important part of being a man. And I think men are very sensitive to these things because we are rightly blamed. We're not rightly. I'm saying we're rightly feeling like we're blamed for a lot of problems in society. You know, there was an article out talking about how Wall Street is has less women. And so therefore, it's just it's the lowest ranked in terms of popularity. It's like, OK, so men bad, women good. We get it. We get it. We get it. As a millennial male, I have been raised to be tolerant and open-minded, but at the same time, I don't feel that a lot of times I've been treated with the same. I'm, I'm very willing to negotiate these new social norms and live on these values. And I think in, in a society, we have to start talking about what we agree on instead of what we disagree on. And angrily getting mad at a commercial that you didn't even watch seems stupid when you could, you could bond with your wife and the women on your Facebook feed, and the men on your Facebook feed, by talking about justice, and empathy, and respect, and personal responsibility, and positivity, and service to others. These are values that we all share as human beings. And men, I think instead of getting mad at these things, and getting sensitive about these things, and feeling like we're on the receiving end of a bad rap, we have to stop ceding that ground to the more extreme voices on either side. The SJW guys who just think all toxic masculinity needs to be destroyed and what that means is just a version of masculinity. And then the guys on the right, the Meninists who are, you know, the Jersey Shore guys, like, you know who I'm talking about, the guys in the gym where you're just like, ugh. 
And I think men who've put values first need to start standing up and use moments like this as teaching tools to start talking about the values that we find important and start implementing these in our own lives, taking steps to make changes in our lives, in our family, in our community, because I really think that the women in our lives are looking for men to be leaders and not in the way that it's like a misogynist of patriarchy. They're looking for men to have value in themselves, value in their family, value in their work, pride in themselves, and actually just kind of care instead of going home, checking out, playing fantasy football, playing video games, ignoring duties that need to be done around the house, ignoring our wives and our kids, playing on our phone. Like, I really just get the sense that that's a lot of men right now. And I, I want to encourage you to maybe rewatch this and think of it in a different way and start picking out the values in this that speak to you. These are just the ones that stuck out to me uh, and start talking about the things that you think are important in life on Facebook instead of like trashing something like this start talking about the things that are important that will improve society so uh, you can hear more about this at we are libertarians.com uh, at uh, any pot any place you get podcast on YouTube our Facebook page or Twitter you can find a link there you can follow me on anything uh, again that's we are libertarians.com and I thank you for watching if you got this far in the video then I really do appreciate it <laughs>